Okay guys, we got a 2012 Nissan Armada Platinum Edition with the uh, air suspension, but the air suspension is not working. So I'm just looking at the diagram here. Uh, the first thing I want to check, besides the fuses, is to make sure the relay is uh, working. Um, first, let's check this fuse at right rear of engine compartment. Fusible link, it says fusible link, 35 amp. I don't know, let's take a look at that. It says right rear. I don't know if it's going to be, is it this one? Okay, it's not that one. So it must be this one back here. Well, what a great place to put a box that you need to get to. Huh. River level suspension 10 amp RR socket uh, so if that's the front uh, it looks like there's a lot more fuses in there than uh, what's on this uh, this uh, this is actually only showing this part down here Tesla. Okay, so I checked all the fuses uh, in here, and they're all good. I got the scan tool out, and I've got it set up to where I can actuate the uh, compressor. And there's a relay right down here right by the overflow bottle. That's the, your compressor relay, and. You can hear it click on, off, on, off. So it is able to be controlled. Everything I've checked in here is good. That relay, I mean, it's not too bad to get to. I could, I could take this overflow bottle out and get to it, but. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here to the back and I'm going to see if I can get to the connector or the compressor. I want to take the scan tool that way I can just uh, actuate that compressor as I need to. So here's the here's your whole pump assembly. You've got your pump and your uh, or your compressor rather, and uh, your lines going to your airbags. Your sensor is right here. Oh, and I actually pulled up the uh, live data on the scan tool. The sensor appears to be working. I don't know what the specs are supposed to be. But it did it, it, it did move when I pushed up and down on the uh, uh, rear bumper. So let me get set up here. Well, hopefully you can see what's going on. And so the camera's kind of out of my. You see that right there? Hopefully. I can't probably even see it. I'll get some light. Whoa. 
what I want to do is get this re relay bracket down up here. I want to get to the uh, to the terminals. <laughs> Unless it's all corroded. See the two for the pump. So let me get a T pin. So the pump is two fat wires. You got a it looks like a, a blue and a black. Obviously the black is going to uh, be the ground. But I'm not just guessing at that. That's what the diagram actually. Says, let's see if I can get that to stay. Okay. Get the scan tool here. Heard the relay click up front. But I'm not seeing, not seeing any any activity there. So let me clip off to another ground just to verify that the ground is either. So there is nothing coming in on the pump. When the relay clicks, I should get power and ground back here. Um, or I should get power. Ground is, I should also have ground. But I clipped off to a bolt and the actual ground for the pump. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and hook this back up that way. That way, if the uh, if I fix the connection wherever it's failing, then at least the pump will come off. Uh, I don't know if that made any sense to you or not. I don't want to have to crawl back up underneath here if I don't have to. So that's all reconnected. I'm assuming the problem is going to be somewhere else. That's basically what I'm saying. So let's go back over here and see what I may have missed. Let's take a look at the diagram so that you guys can understand what's going on. So the relay I'm clicking is this one right here. So there should be power from this 35 amp. I think that's 35 amp. What it's called a fusible link to the relay when the relay clicks it sends power down here to this light blue wire <clears throat> then the other two wires so you got two grounds and they're both black you got a light blue which was the one actually you got you got two light blues this one is going straight to the uh, control unit now I'm commanding the control unit 
Well, I'm commanding this right here, com compressor relay out. And it's actuating the relay up under the hood. So I guess what I actually need to do is I need to get, I'm going to have to take that relay. I'm going to have to get to the relay so I can check the powers going into it. Just because it's clicking doesn't mean that that it's good. So let's see, do I want to take that bottle out or what? I'm going to try to reach down there with my air ratchet. Since I hear it clicking, I don't really care about these connectors. There's two connectors on the relay. Two of them are the heavy load carrying wires. And then two of the wires are the control wires, which are the, the smaller of the two. And I know you can't really see that that good, but there's two connectors. One's got heavy wires, bigger. One's got smaller wires. So I'm going to undo the uh, one with the bigger wires and see if we got we should have power on one of them see if I can get you guys in a spot here um, so I need to flip this thing around Screwdriver. What I want to do is unplug that connector. Need some light. Need some light. No matter where I put it, it's going to be in my way. So one of these should be hot right now. Okay, that one is. So now what I want to do... Alright guys, so I've got the... I've got the uh, compressor jumpered, that relay is bad, compressor just shut off, I just took a jumper, got a little jumper I made up years ago, um, which just verified, even though that relay is clicking, that relay is not making connection so I'm going to disconnect that other connector uh, and then we're going to check the relay on the bench and see if we can actually get into it uh, a lot of times the, the, the uh, contacts get carboned up and you can file them with like a small file or sandpaper and get them working again if not uh, the relay is going to have to be replaced.
So I'm going to undo the connector. I'm not going to leave the camera on for you guys to watch that. You've seen me struggle enough trying to get down here. I tried to take the overflow bottle out. I was able to get it to where I could move it around a little bit. But with all the hoses hooked up, it, it's too much of a pain. So I'm not going to mess with that anymore uh, as long as I can get to that other connector. Okay, so I've got my power supply here. Let's get it cranked up. And we got about 14 volts on it. Um, the two smaller uh, terminals are the power and ground for the actuation of the relay, which is what we want to do right now. I'm sure this relay is not polarity sensitive, so I'm just going to clip off to one. We've already verified pretty much that it's bad. It's got a nice strong click, which we heard that with it on the car. Now I've got my meter here. Let me uh, get in here. You may or may not be able to see this part. And yeah, it's it's wide open. Wait a minute. Is it really? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Let me get in here better. Okay, there we go. No, oh, dang it. These ain't the right. Or these ain't the optimum. Uh, terminal ends. Okay, so the relay is made or it's actuated. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that meter, but 76 ohms is not a good reading for a set of contacts in a uh, in a relay. So basically, what you're wanting is if I was to con if I was to touch both these together. That's what you're looking for. Under an ohm, 0.5 or better, um, the, the leads can actually cause just a little bit of resistance, so that 0.2, uh, maybe just from the leads. But 76 ohms definitely is not an acceptable resistance for a set of contacts. So I'm going to go price out a relay, see how much one of those are local. This relay, I was hoping I'd be able to get into it, but it is 100% sealed. There is no opening this relay up, which makes sense since it's uh, out under the hood. Anyway, compressor relay on a 2012 Armada. Um, is the problem with this. I don't know if that's a common problem with these. But on this particular vehicle, the relay is the problem. So, uh, if I'm able to get a relay today, I'll put it in, and you'll see the uh, you'll see it in action. All right, guys. So we are back out on the Nissan. I got the relay in. This is an OEM Nissan relay. And if you remember, I just left it unplugged so the plugs are just dangling down there so I'm gonna I'm gonna get this put in here hooked up and uh, we will see if that did indeed take care of the problem okay the relay is back in and all hooked up so let's go around here all right guys so I've got the autel hooked up when I hit the on button for the compressor you can hear the compressor coming on you can see the height sensor changing 2.54 2.56 2.58 2.6 you can see that it is it is raised in the back uh, so now let's do this let's do the exhaust solenoid
And there it goes. You can see the the vehicle is going down in height. Get off to that. Okay, so it did end up being the relay. And just so you know where the relay's at, here's your battery. Here's your overflow bottle for your coolant. Relay is right down, right in front of the battery. So, uh, I don't know if that's a common problem on these vehicles, but uh, that's at least where your relay is at if you need to uh, work on the air levelizer. Of course, your compressor, uh, bent solenoid, and everything is back right on the other side of the left rear tire. And that's about it uh, this relay just happened to be bad it would actually click nice strong click whenever you energize it but the uh, contacts are probably carboned up uh, and there's no way to take the relay apart to you know to uh, clean them up I am planning on here's the old relay right here I am planning on cutting this open just to see uh, you know how it's designed and if it's easily able to scrub the contacts and then if it's possible to glue this back together for people that don't have that so this relay was a dealer only item they don't make an aftermarket one you can see it's kind of an oddball it actually has two connectors going to it and the auto parts stores didn't have it. I had to. I ended up ordering ordering it online, and uh, obviously your Nissan dealer would have it. But it's a it's a factory only relay. So if you're out somewhere, you don't have access to a relay, you don't want to spend the money on one. Uh, I'm going to find out if it's possible to carefully cut this open, clean the contacts or what it, whatever it needs, and be able to epoxy it back together. That would at least, you know, if that's possible, that would at least uh, give you a uh, another option of fixing the relay and maybe getting it on down the road, you know. Uh, not that you need to have this relay. They've been driving around with this air suspension in op for a couple years now. So, uh, but the whole, pro let me tell you what the actual problem with this vehicle was. Even though it looks fine as far as the ride height, and everything the rear would just bounce up and down as they're driving down the highway the rear literally had virtually no suspension uh, or no shock absorbing ability even though the shock absorbers are fine without that air compressor working and at least having a certain amount of uh, air pressure going to it the shock absorbers don't work the way they should so that was the whole reason for troubleshooting and getting this thing fixed it wasn't the fact that they you know it was too too low in the back or too high or anything like that the ride height is fine without the shock absorbers even bolted on the springs keep the vehicle at the ride height that needs to be the whole air suspension is meant to where if you hook a trailer or if you load the back up with you know a bunch of stuff and it starts to you know to sag in the back the air suspension is supposed to keep the vehicle level and even under uh, just regular conditions with, with no trailer no or nothing in the back the compressor should come on and it, it put a little bit of air in the shocks so they work properly anyway enough with that we got the relay working now all that's good this video is done uh and uh all right so you guys take care and we'll see you in the next one